Food safety legislation is required to set minimum standards for food business operators and food premises, which reduces the risk of foodborne illness and the sale of contaminated food, thereby protecting public health. The legislation includes things like Acts of Parliament, which are the principles of legislation, EU directives, where the Member State issues regulations to implement requirements, EU regulations, apply to all Member States directly, and regulations, which is subordinate legislation to enforce the requirements of Acts and directives and to facilitate enforcement of the EU regulations. Food safety legislation is concerned with preventing the production or sale, etc., of injurious, unsafe, unfit or substandard food. Preventing the contamination of food, the hygiene of food premises, equipment and personnel, including training. It looks at hygienic practices including temperature control and HACCP. It also looks at the provision of facilities, the control of food poisoning and foodborne disease, importation, the composition, amount and labelling of food, the registration and licensing of businesses. Offences and penalties. Penalties include, under the Food Safety Act, a maximum fine of up to £20,000. Willingness of the complainant to be a witness, the willingness of management to prevent recurrence, and the adequacy of a due diligence defence. Food safety legislation is dealt with under criminal law, so it's dealt with in magistrates and crown courts. So the higher penalties, the unlimited fine and or two years imprisonment, is the penalty imposed by a crown court, and the magistrates court would set a penalty of £20,000 fine and or six months imprisonment. The Magistrates Court deals with less serious or summary offences and the Crown Court deals with more serious or what we call indictable offences. In a Magistrates Court, innocence or guilt is decided by the JPs. In a Crown Court, innocence or guilt is decided by the jurors in the jury. Regulation EC 852-2004 on the hygiene of foodstuffs. This regulation lays down general hygiene rules for all food businesses on the basis of the following principles. Primary responsibility for food safety rests with the food business operator. The cold chain... ...and HACCP principles. Microbiological criteria and temperature control must be based on a scientific risk assessment. Food business operators must ensure that all steps in the production, processing and distribution of food satisfy the relevant hygiene requirements. They must implement a food safety management system based on the seven HACCP principles. They must register with the local authority. They must not allow food handlers who are ill or affected with skin infections, etc., to handle food if there is any risk of contamination. They must ensure that those responsible for the HACCP system are trained in the application of the HACCP principles. Article 5 of Regulation EC No. 852-2004 deals with the requirements for food safety management systems based on HACCP principles. Article 6 looks at food business operators to make sure they register with the local authority. Article 8 looks at national guides to good practice and they should be developed by food businesses. Annex 2, the general hygiene requirements state that food premises and food rooms premises must be kept clean and maintained in good repair. The premises must also have satisfactory design, layout and construction of adequate washing facilities and potable or market stalls and vendor machines must protect against contamination and maintaining and monitoring temperatures. Transport 
must be kept clean and protect food from contamination. Equipment must be kept clean and in good condition and be installed to allow cleaning of surrounding area. Food waste must not be allowed to accumulate in food rooms and must be deposited in closable containers. And with the water supply, there must be an adequate potable supply so foods are not contaminated. And this includes ice. Ice must be made from potable water. Personal hygiene. Personnel must have high standards of personal hygiene. Wear clean, protective clothing. Report to the food business operator when suffering or suspects he or she is suffering from a foodborne disease or condition, for example skin infection or sores, which may result in food contamination. Foodstuffs. Food must be protected against contamination and from pests. Not be kept at temperatures that might result in a risk to health, so adequate refrigeration is required. Hot food to be cooled must be cooled as quickly as possible. Wrapping and packaging the foodstuffs. These must not be a source of contamination. Reusable wrapping or packaging material must be easy to clean and, when necessary, to disinfect. And heat treatment. Food in hermetically sealed containers should be heat treated in accordance with internationally recognised standards. And we cover the training in Module 6. Under the Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006 and under the Temperature Control Requirements, with chill holding, food which will support the growth of pathogens are not to be kept above 8 degrees Celsius unless it is hot food on display. Or there is no health risk at ambient temperatures, or if it's canned or dehydrated, or it's raw which will be cooked, or if the scientific assessment indicates there is no risk, or if it is for service or on display for one single occasion of not more than four hours, or the tolerance for defrosting, delivery and breakdown for a limited period is consistent with food safety. The exemptions are with bakers for example, uncut baked egg products you must dispose of after 24 hours, pies and pasties encased in pastry to which nothing has been added after baking and sausage rolls dispose of after 48 hours and cream up to 12 degrees celsius for 16 hours then dispose. Hot holding Hot food on display must be kept above 63 degrees Celsius unless a scientific assessment indicates there is no risk or where it is for service or on display for one single occasion of not more than two hours. Regulation EC No. 852-2004 also requires that food must be not be kept at temperatures that might result in a risk to health. Food must be cooled quickly following cooking if required to be chilled and food premises must have sufficient refrigerated storage. So, two important points out of that regulation, you've got the four hour rule with cold food and the two hour rule with hot food. In other words, with cold food, you can keep cold chilled high risk food out at ambient temperature for up to four hours and still sell the product. But whilst or when the four hours have stopped, then the food must be disposed of or re-chilled. With hot food, hot food can be cooked and then left at ambient temperature for no more than two hours and it must be sold within that two hour period. The Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006 also provide for the enforcement of the EU Hygiene Regulations and in particular Regulation 3, presumption that food is intended for human consumption. Regulation 5, Enforcement Authority, Food Authority, which is usually the local authority, unless it's the Food Standards Agency. But these mainly apply to slaughterhouses and meat plants. Regulation 6, Hygiene Improvement Notices, served by authorised of officers for offences of the hygiene regulations. Failure to comply with the notice is an offence and results in prosecution, but a company can appeal. Regulation 7, looks at hygiene prohibition orders which are issued by the court to prohibit use of process equipment, premises or food business operator and this can apply for a minimum of six months. It follows 
a conviction for hygiene offences if there is a risk of injury to health. So an improvement notice then gives time and a hygiene prohibition order does not. Notices are distributed by the environmental health practitioners but orders are provided by the courts. Regulation 8 deals with the hygiene emergency prohibition notice. Notice served by an authorised officer if there is an imminent risk of injury to health, for example rats or sewage pollution. The premises are closed but must apply to the court for an order within three days. It ceases to have effect when the authorised officer confirms there is no longer a health risk. If the court refuses to issue a hygiene emergency prohibition order, the enforcement authority is liable for compensation. Regulation 11, it is a defence to prove you took all reasonable precautions and exercised all due diligence to avoid the offence. Accurate written records are useful to prove this due diligence defence. However, inaccurate or incomplete records are of little value and probably worse than having no records at all. It is not a legal requirement to have a due diligence defence. A suitable food safety management system is essential and will be taken into account by an environmental health practitioner considering prosecution for a hygiene offence. The burden of proof is on the defendant and discharged on the balance of probabilities. Regulation 12. Authorised officers may take samples of food for analysis. Regulation 14. Powers of entry for authorised officers to food premises at all reasonable hours and they must show authority. 24 hours notice in business in domestic premises. Regulation 15. It's an offence to obstruct an authorised officer. Regulation 17. Looks at the penalties. Magistrates court £5,000 for each offence. Crown Court unlimited fine and up to two years imprisonment. Regulation 18 looks at the directors, managers or secretaries of corporate bodies and how they may be prosecuted. Regulation 20 to 22 deals with appeals. Regulation 23 deals with an authorised officer may seize food which fails the food safety requirements. And lastly, Schedule 6 restrictions on the sale of raw milk for direct human consumption. For example from restaurant or retail outlet. Statutory codes of practice are issued by ministers for enforcement authorities regarding the enforcement of food law. They assist in producing a uniform standard of enforcement. They are not legally binding however. Directions may be given by ministers and enforceable through the courts. The food law code of practice enforcement authorities must have regard for and the Food Law Practice Guidance Enforcement Authorities may have regard for. And they divided in the following sections Administration, Communication, General Enforcement, Inspections, Product Specific Regulations, Sampling, Monitoring of Inspections and Annexes. National Guides to Good Practice are developed by food business sectors in consultation with competent authorities and consumer groups and they must have regard to Codex Alimentarius. They have practical guides on legislation. Authorised officers must have regard to content. They help to achieve consistency. They may be used in court to illustrate good practice and food businesses may opt to comply in other ways. As a result of the Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006, the Food Safety Act 1990 is now primarily concerned with food standards and quality. The main offences are Section 7, to render food injurious to health, must be had to the cumulative effect. Section 9, authorised officers may seize or detain food which fails to comply with the food safety requirements or is likely to cause food poisoning or a foodborne disease. A Justice of the Peace may condemn the food if requested. Section 14. To sell food to the prejudice of the purchaser, which is not of the nature, i.e. different kind of variety, or substance, not containing proper ingredients, or quality, inferior for example, still bread, demanded by the purchaser. Section 21 is the due diligence defence. 
See also the Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006. Section 29 and 30 empowers authorised officer to purchase or take samples of food for analysis. Section 32 empowers the authorised officer on production of authority to enter any food premises at all reasonable hours, providing there is a 24 hour notice required of private dwelling house. Section 33 relates to obstruction. Section 35 relates to penalties on indictment and a limited fine and or up to two years imprisonment. On summary conviction, up to £20,000 and or up to six months imprisonment. Regulation 4A of the General Food It is an offence to place food on the market if it is unsafe, in other words injurious to health or unfit for human consumption, i.e. a contravention of Article 14 of Regulation EC 178 2002. It effectively replaces Section 8 of the Food Safety Act 1990. and a statement is taken. The seller is notified and invited to see the complaint. There is an inspection of food premises and practices in relation to the complaint. A due diligence defence is considered. The complaint is sent for laboratory analysis. The continuity of evidence is essential. Once the officer believes a prosecution is likely, the proprietor of the business is interviewed under caution. Food Labelling Regulations 1996. This requires that most foods sold for human consumption must be labelled with the name of the food, the list of ingredients, the best before date or the use by date. The best before date is placed on low risk foods with longer shelf life, for example dry foods and frozen foods. It's a quality issue, it's a, it's a food quality date. It's not an offence to sell food after that date but there will be no due diligence defence if the food is found to be unfit. The use by date is a food safety date and is used on high risk perishable food which requires refrigeration. It is an offence to sell food after that date or even to alter that date and as I say it's a food safety issue. The next thing to be placed They require that the labelling of food which contain the following allergens is placed on the label. First of all, cereals containing gluten, crustaceans, eggs, fish, peanuts, soybeans, nuts, celery, mustard, sesame seeds, sulphur dioxide and sulphites. Enforcement of food safety legislation is the overall responsibility of the Food Standards Agency, the FSA. Food authorities, i.e. the local authorities, have the responsibility to enforce food safety legislation using authorised officers at local level, and these are environmental health practitioners, formerly called environmental health officers, and they are varied powers including the power to inspect food sold or intended for sale for human consumption, the power of entry at any reasonable time of the day or night, and they can be accompanied by a police constable. They can provide advice, they can provide an informal letter giving recommendations, they can provide training, they can serve notices, for example a hygiene improvement and emergency prohibition notice. They can close premises. They can seize or detain food which fails to comply with food safety requirements. They can instigate and initiate a prosecution. They can seize or detain records but not destroy, for use as evidence. And they can purchase or take samples of food and ingredients for analysis. The duties of environmental health practitioners include routine inspection of food premises, 
investigation of food poisoning outbreaks, investigation of food complaints, providing training and lecturing on food hygiene courses, facilitating food incidents, hazards and alerts, dealing with planning and licensing applications, dealing with registration of food premises. The Home Authority deal will deal with national companies if the national company's headquarters is within their area. And their duties also include local business forums. Trading Standards Officers, TSOs, are concerned with composition, labelling, weight and volume and certain aspects of food safety, for example adulteration. Authorised officers do not fine, prosecute or condemn foods. Courts fine, authorities prosecute and JPs condemn. Inspection of food premises. The purpose of the inspection is to establish whether food is being handled and produced hygienically. Is to establish if food is safe to eat. Is to identify foreseeable incidences of food poisoning. Determine the scope of the business, for example wholesale. To assess the effectiveness of HACCP, especially in relation to critical control points. Identify hazards and effectiveness of controls and adequate records and documentation. To check standards have been achieved, both legally and by industry guides. To identify training needs of staff and their competency. To provide advice and make recommendations. To respond to a complaint. To revisit. To continually improve food hygiene standards. To ensure the business complies with the law and to consider the appropriate enforcement action, which must be proportionate to the risk. Under the Food Law Code of Practice and Guidance, prior to inspection, an officer must take into account the premises history, the time of inspection, the equipment required, the protective clothing required, and the additional expertise required. The frequency of inspection should take into account the type of premises, the nature of food, the degree of handling, size of the business, the type of customer, the current level of compliance, management confidence, history of compliance, and lastly, control systems already in place. So that's the end of Lecture 13 and the end of the course. So let's have a look at the key points for Lecture 13. We looked at the main requirements of Regulation EC 852-2004, on the Hygiene Foodstuffs, the main requirements of the Food Hygiene England Regulations 2006, including temperature control, notices and orders, offences and due diligence defence. We looked at the purpose of codes of practice and industry guides, and the Food Safety Act 1990 and the investigation of food complaints. Also the legislation regarding the labelling and date code of the food, the powers and duties of authorised officers, environmental health practitioners, environmental health officers and the inspection of food premises by environmental health practitioners and environmental health officers.